everybody, we're the Beckbrook Brothers. And today they've got the Lego Harry Potter collectible minifigure series. Let's start with the boy who lived himself, Harry Potter. He features the new teen leg piece on this figure, which is brand new for this collectible minifigure series, and is one plate taller than the short legs, but a plate shorter than the normal legs, and it allows you to have the same range of mobility as you get with the normal Lego minifigure legs. He includes Hedwig and uh, two dark brown wands. One is featured here because they come on a little screw attached together. He has printing on both his torso, hips, legs, and head. He does not feature an alternate face. His hair piece is the same one that they used in the Lego Dimensions figure, and I worked well enough. I personally prefer the hair piece from the year one and two versions of Harry because it allows you to see the little scar with the way it's molded. I'll show you the, that figure in a little bit. The printing is very nice. It shows his Gryffindor robes. Hedwig is also very nice looking if you go around to the back. He's got no arm decoration on the back. You can see the rest of his cloak. He does not feature an alternate face, just the smile you see here. And overall, I think this is a pretty good looking figure. Next up, we can take a look at Ron Weasley. And he features the same Gryffindor robe type as Harry, though the printing is different. He looks a little bit less neat. He's a little bit more rough. The hair piece is new and orange for this figure, and it was originally created for the Han Solo figure. He comes with scabbers that is pretty much the same as you get in most of the other Harry Potter sets, though he features this little hair printing on the top of his head, which is new for this figure. Ron comes with a normal brown wand, well, actually two, because they come on a sprue. His face is, this, is only one-sided again, no double-sided face on his one. The robe is a little bit different on this figure. If you, spin it, if you spin it around, you can take a look at his back printing. Pretty much the same as on Harry. It looks nice again, and overall this is a pretty good figure. The third main, well, I'm going to say the third main character from the Harry Potter series is Hermione Granger. She features another variant of the same robes type as Ron and Harry. She has got the tidiest looking ones out of all of them, considering her personality. She comes with her cat Crowshanks, and she features a dark tan wand. Well, actually, too. Again, her he head, she's smiling. She does not feature a second expression. If we flip her around, we can see what else. We can remove the hair piece and get a better look at her back printing. And once again, it's very similar to what we've seen on both Harry and Ron. Very nice figure altogether. All right, our fourth Gryffindor we're going to take a look at is Dean Thomas, who is the sports announcer during Quidditch games. He comes with a flag and another dark brown wand. He is our fourth figure that has a robe style similar to that of Harry, Ron, and Hermione, though his features a very nice scarf, and it's still unique. Each one's different. Great job, Leo. You could have easily just done, gone with the same one. He's got only a single-sided space depicting a smile, and he, his hair piece is, I believe, new and dark brown. The cool thing, if you look closely on the flag, is that right here, the little these are flame elements, and that helmet is an actual minifig helmet. So Lego actually used Lego parts in the design of that flag. The bad thing, though, is if you flip it around, it's only one-sided. He also features back routine like the rest of the figures, and he does not have an alternate face. Right, now we are taking a look at Cedric Diggory, his first time being depicted in minifigure form, and he is wearing his outfit from the Triwizard Tournament in Harry Potter Book 4. He comes with a giant trophy which says Triwiz on it, a dark brown wand again. I think we might have gotten the wands mixed up on these figures though, so I think it's dark brown. His face depicts a smile. I do not think he has an alternate face. His hair piece is very nice, and the cool thing is if we spin him around, he's got printing on the sides of his legs. No printing on the front of his legs, but printing on the side of his legs. That's very cool, very rare to see. If we continue spinning him around, you can also see that he's got his name printed on the back, Diggory, which is kind of hard to see. And we can check if he has an alternate face. Nope, just playing again. Alright, now on to the next figure. Now we are taking a look at Dobby the House Elf, who comes with a brand new molded head and a new molded book. The book appears in other sets. So it's very cool because if you spin it around, you can see that you can place a 1x2 tile in it, and here he's got his distinctive book uh, sock in it. You can close the book too, like this, and the book features printing on the front to cover. 
if we continue looking at the printing on him, his head is new molded, and it comes with a smile and some health self, which will be very useful if you want to create other house cells for other projects. His torso is a new print that depicts his raggedy outfit, and if we spin him around, you can take a look at his back printing on here, which is very nice and detailed again. Okay, now we are taking a look at Professor Albus Dumbledore, the headmaster of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. He features a dark tan wand and a plate, which features printing to make it look like he's doing his memory stuff in late, the later books. He's got a brand new beard piece and a brand new hair slash head piece, which features printing to show his little gold tassel thing and the cap. His printing looks very nice, so sadly he does not have any back printing, but we can spin it around and take a look at what he looks like with his hair on the back. And there's some pretty good shaping on the hair, and now we can take a look at him with his, um... Beard on. This is what he looks like without his beard on, and you can better see the printing on his torso, and you can see his head printing, which features a beard and glasses, which might be helpful on other figures, though he does have very bushy eyebrows. Overall, this is a pretty good figure, but I would have liked to see back printing on him. We're taking a look at Alistair Mad-Eye Moody. Yes, that's his full name. And he's actually probably going to be one of my favorite figures from this entire series. He only makes an appearance in one book, though he includes very cool printing on both his hips, legs, torso, and head. And he's got, not double, but triple molded legs. That's right, triple molded legs because the hip is a color, and then each of the legs is a mix of two colors to show his peg leg, mechanical leg stuff. He also features an alternate hair piece, and I'll show you what that means in a minute. He features a staff and a reused maraca piece to represent a drinking flask. He also comes with a wand, but we do not have it pictured here, that way we can better show his other accessories, but he has a wand. His hair piece is new for this figure, and if we spin around, we can take a look at the back. And he's got back printing, and you can see the triple molding on his legs. I love double molded legs, because it just better shows how he's got, like, boots or something. And I also like triple molded legs a lot, too. Also, I forgot to mention about the face, that it does have a very nice representation of his mad eye. Now, I'll show you some extra cool feature in a minute, so we'll be back to you in a minute. Hmm. This doesn't quite look like mad eye Moody, does it? Well, that's because it isn't mad eye Moody. This is a bad guy from book four that goes and transforms himself to look like Mad-Eye Moody using a potion, and that's what the drinking flask is all about. He's got a completely different looking face, and that's what the alternate hair piece is for. That way you can represent his change of character, and that is cool. That is very, very cool. So, this is Professor Flitwick, the professor that teaches charms at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, and he's a pretty cool figure. He is represented, his short stature is represented using short legs, which do not feature any printing. His torso features his usual little suit. He's got a mega horn type piece. I'm not quite sure what that's all about, but, well, he has one. He's got a brown wand and a little bow tie piece. He has got a new hair piece, I believe, and his face is... Uh, I think it's a pretty good representation. I don't really care for the movies. I like the books. If we go and spin them around, we can take a look at his coattails, which are achieved using a cloth item. He does not have any back printing at all, so maybe a little bit of back printing would be nice, but overall a very excellent Now figure. we are taking a look at Professor Chilwani, the professor that teaches fortune telling at Hogwarts. Sorry, lost that for a minute there. She has got the new sloped dress piece, which has got very nice printing as it features, well, printing. He, she also has a very nice printed torso featuring a ne various necklaces with different charms. She's got a very cool teacup and saucer element referencing the one lesson that she teaches. The teacup and saucer are removable parts and the saucer features printing. She's got a very nice hair piece t as well, which is exclusive to the figure, which also features printing that appears to be a sort of cap. Her face features a smile, and if we spin her around, oh, that's right, she's got a, also a dark brown wand. If we spin her around, we can take a look at her non-existent black printing. So, I'd like to see more back printing, but I think it's a good, but I think overall it's a very good figure. This is Luna Lovegood, the very perky Ravenclaw from Harry Potter. She features a new hairpiece, and she's got printing on both her torso and face. She's got, for accessories, she's got the Quibbler magazine, which she's known for in the films and books, and a dark brown wand. She's got a cloth skirt piece, 
and she's got a very colorful outfit instead of the normal student outfits that you've seen so far. If you spin her around, we can take a look at the back of her. And she will feature back printing when we flip her around, her hair around. Ah, never mind. No back printing. But she instead has her spectroscopes on. At least that's how I think you say it. Her cloth piece you also continues around the back, so it's a full skirt. She does not feature any back printing because her hair covers it. And her hair piece is special because it can cover up this little bandolier thing, which allows her to have a little satchel. This is Draco Malfoy, the rather mean Slytherin boy from the Harry Potter series. He has got a snitch and a broom. The snitch is actually almost exclusive to this figure, having only appeared in one other set, the Harry Potter Quidditch match set from the 2018 summer Harry Potter wave. His torso is not all too special, it just features his outfit. Rather similar, I believe, to the ones in the Quidditch match set. His face does not seem to be very happy, he seems to be scowling. He's got the hairpiece that's fe been featured on many other Draco Malfoy minifigures, at least this year. We can turn him around and see the back. And he has got a dark green short cape. He's also got back printing depicting the rest of his Quidditch outfit. Overall, nice figure. It's great to get more Slytherin Our players. First Harry Potter minifigure depicting a, car a student in Herbology class. This is Neville Longbottom. He is a very rather important character from the series, and here you can see the teen legs in action as he's in a walking pose. He features the brand new Mandrake element, which is composed of the, both the green leaf part and the Mandrake itself. Their pot appears to be in a new recoloring, which I think is dark orange. His hair piece depicts his face rather nicely, and it's great to get that torso because it can be used for other students in her herbology. So it's very nice, though it would be hard to use it for other um, houses because he's got the tie. If you flip him around, we can take a look at what's, uh, what else is here. And he's got a new hairpiece, which depicts his little earmuffs, considering he is dealing with the mandrake. Also, I forgot to mention that he's got a dark brown wand. His back printing is rather nice, depicting the back of his out little outfit. And we can take a look at his alternate face which shows him being seduced by the Mandrake's cry. And that's about it for Neville Longbottom. Here is Harry and Invisibility Cloak, which features, well, the Invisibility Cloak, which is very nice. It is, features the silvery color on the outside to show that he's supposed to be invisible. So this is like the bit, part in the first Harry Potter movie where he does not have it, it over his head and only his head remains. He has got another dark brown wand. And this features that hair piece I said I really liked because it's got this little section which allows you to see his scar through it. That's very nice. It lets you know that you're seeing Harry Potter. He's smiling, which is, I believe, an exclusive headpiece compared to the ones we've seen in other sets. And now we can take a look at him with his invisibility. See Harry Potter's pajamas, which features printed legs that makes it look like he's got bare feet. Very nice. I think this is one of our first bare feet minifigures we've ever gotten. His pajamas are pretty representative. I mean, he's got pajamas on, so he must be kind of exploring Hogwarts. He will, he also, his invisibility cloak will feature the printing on the other side to show a cool decoration on the inside. We can go around and see the back of him. And here is the back printing for his pajamas. Also, the printing for the pants continues on the back. I don't think I've really seen that on many figs. Generally, if you want to have it on the back too, it's got to be dual molded legs. This is a cool figure because, well, invisibility cloak. This is Cho Chang, one, uh, the Ravenclaw student that has Pike Terry's love interest. He, she features a cool new owl in a dark tannish medium nougat color. It's very nice printing. She features a skirt piece to show her skirt that covers her pants. She's our first Ravenclaw minifigure ever. Well, at least our first Ravenclaw minifigure that features the actual outfit. I love Ravenclaw. It's my favorite house. She has got the hair piece, which is not new for her. She's got the very nice head piece, which has got a smile. She features the new teen legs. And, well, it's great to get a Ravenclaw, finally. Thank you, Lego. Thank you. Let's take a look at her back printing. And you can see it better with her hairpiece removed. And this is her with her hairpiece removed, which means that you can see the be that way you can better see her back printing, which once again features Ravenclaw. 
She has, I also forgot to mention that she has a normal brown log. Okay, we've saved the bat, the worst for last. I mean, it's a great figure, but the worst villain for, for last. He who must not be named, aka Voldemort. Okay, that must be bad. He's got the very nice printing, which features his first time in a more dark green outfit. Lego usually uses black. He also features an exclusive white wand, and he also has a snake, which we'll show to you separately later. We can turn him around and see nothing. I would prefer to have seen back printing on this figure as he does not really have anything to block it, but it's fine, I guess. He's got a new, well, or just general expression, less smiling and less angry. And we can take a look at his snake this now. This is Voldemort's pet snake. I forgot his or her name, so I'll just call it Snake. The snake features a new mold exclusive to this figure, and it features a um, little bit of printing for the eyes. It's a great looking snake, though it has one major drawback. You can't really fit it on studs. The old Lego snake snaked around the studs perfectly. You could attach it on and not worry about it falling off. This snake is, well, the better looking, though it would have been nice had Lego made it so you could attach it to studs. It is a very nice looking snake, again, but it can't at be attached to studs, so it's like a win-lose thing. So if, like, you've just got this figure, there's no real good way to place the snake, which is kind of sad, unless you want to have Voldemort grab it by its tail, and that's just kind of weird. We are taking a look at the first Fantastic Beasts minifigure, Prudence. He is the wizard that is actually pretending to be a muggle from Fantastic Beasts somewhere to find him. Sorry, spoiler alert. He has got the hairpiece normally used on Ron in orange before the he began using the one usually used on Luke Skywalker minifix. The printing is nice for his torso, though it would have been great to get leg printing on him too, but now nah, I'll let it pass. If we turn around him a little bit, we can take a look at the printing on his leaflet, which says witches live among us, and it's showing his mother's very anti-wizard, like witches, like second Salem attitude. He does not feature any back printing, sadly, though I do believe he has an alternate face. Which shows him when he's unleashing the giant black cloud. Jacob Kowalski, the Uncle Baker from Fantastic Beasts, somewhere to find him. He features a very nice suit, which would be very helpful for characters outside of Harry Potter, because, well, suits are great. I, the gr suits are great for minifigs. He once again does not feature any leg printing, that's kind of sad. Though he does feature the new suitcase piece, with, piece, which can be opened. To reveal some pastries, once again considering his background as a baker. His hairpiece is a very nice one, used on other figures in this line and outside of this line. He has also got a very nice headpiece, and if we spin him around, we can take a look at his back. And once again, no back printing. That's a little bit sad, but once again, generally good figure. Scamander, the main protagonist of Fantastic Beasts, somewhere to find him. I'm a big fan of this version of him, my favorite by far version of him in Lego form, as he features both dual molded pants and a very nice printed detail on his torso. If you look closely in the top left corner, you can see his bow truckle. And that's awesome. I like seeing the bow truckle printed on there. It's very cool. And it's a very detailed print. He also comes with the exceptionally awesomely cute Niffler. That is a very cute creature. And the new suitcase, which has got nothing in it. And it's basically the same thing you've seen on the Jago Kwaski minifigure. Sadly, you cannot fit the Niffler inside of it, but you can kind of have it like peeking out. He's got the same hairpiece used on all previous versions of him, and he is giving you a big wide smile. If we turn him around, we can see the back of him, and he does feature back printing and those dual molded legs, which I'm a very big fan of. I do not believe he has an alternate face. And I was right. Overall, this is a very great figure, by far my favorite version of him in Lego form yet. Queenie Goldstein, one of the other protagonists of Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. She features the brand new apple strudel piece, which is referenced from part of the movie, where she makes an apple strudel, of course. She features a dark brown wand. Sorry, I forgot to mention, Noose Commander comes with a non-pictured dark orange wand, which looks great. Her hair piece has been used on other figures before, and her face is smiling. She features a very nice dress outfit because it's got dual molded legs, and it's got her high heels printed on it, so if we go to the side of her, you can see the dual molded and it's printed on the side, and 
her high heels, which there's like printed shoes on a minifigure. That is awesome. If you continue spinning her around, you can see her back printing and the rest of her dual molded legs. Sadly, the shoes aren't dual molded, though I don't know how Lego would have done that. So overall, very nice figure. We're now looking at Tina Goldstein, Queenie Goldstein's sister, another one of the main protagonists of the movie. She features a newly colored hot dog bun, and I think the hot dog as well, and a brown wand. She has got dual molded legs and a dual molded hair slash hat piece, which we'll take a look at in a minute. She's got very nice printing, once again one of my favorite representations of this character in minifigure form, just because of the high level of detail Lego's gone through. We can take a look at the back of her now and see her back printing and the continuation of the dual molded. She also has an alternate hair piece, or head piece, and it shows her smiling. The last figure we're going to show you is the one-of-a-kind figure that you can only get one in each box. So if you have like a box of figures, there's only going to be one. So the most rare figure, Grindelwald slash Percival Graves. Here we are looking at Percival Graves, who's got a very nice printed outfit, which features one of the highest levels of detail. He's also got a dark tan wand. He's got very nice hair, head piece, which features his bushy eyebrows and smile. His hair piece is really cool because it's printed with a bit of gray on it, so he's getting kind of old. The back of his, of his torso features more printing. And then you can switch him to Grindelwald. Oh, wait, also, arm printing. One figure in this series with arm printing. I like it. I like the level of detail. This is definitely my favorite Grindelwald. I like this one much better than the one featured in Grindelwald's escape set. Now we can switch him to Grindelwald. And this is our latest Vindel, Grindelwald himself. All you have to do is switch out the hairpiece and flip around the head, and now you've got Johnny Depp as Grindelwald. He's got a very nice mustache, and the hairpiece is a pretty well-looking representation of his hair. I definitely, once again, like this figure much better than the one in the uh, Grindelwald's escape set. All right, now for the overview. Overall, we think this series is great. But there are a few nitpicks we can make, such as the fact that Voldemort's snake can't fit on studded surfaces, and stuff such as lack of leg or back printing on some figures. Also, the Niffler can fit in Newt Scamander's case, but that isn't very major, but you know, still something that would have been maybe a little bit nice. Once again, this is a bit biased because we love Harry Potter and we love Legos, but if you love those things too, I think that you'll enjoy this series. What do you think, Jake? I agree, Ian, and please subscribe if you like our videos.